Okay, so that's the end of it na pala. Ano ba yan? Okay, so we are done with the um management functions. So lahat ba kayo, you're able to log into the portal? So who el who who have not yet? But I'm not I'm going to edit the post. Uh, I will post office management. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me check your your details, Miss Depika. I thought you were Indian. Okay, so yung iba hindi pa ano si Miss Mary ang nilagay ko na. Okay, I will fix this today. But you got already your username and passwords, right? Yeah. Okay, no worries. We'll fix that. So, can you just refresh, Miss Dita? Si Miss Perry, and try mo na mag-log in sa phone. Yeah, so How about Miss Anna Lynn? Hindi pa na-open. Hindi pa na-open. Hindi pa na-open. Hindi pa na-open. Miss Anna Lynn, pahingi ako ng enrollment number mo. Ay, ito pala. Hindi pa na. Sorry. This is Mary Ann. See, Miss Pepita and Mary. Si Noor, na try mo na mag-log in, Miss Noor. Si Miss Raiza. Si Miss Miss Raiza. Wala pa siya. Si Miss Maricel. Ka-access ka na Miss Maricel. So, kailangan mo lang yung file ng office management. Pa-refresh na lang ha, ng page. Okay, next si John. Can you please see Miss Joan if you're able to log in? Huh? Refresh me lang ha. Kung nag appear na yung office management tile. And Miss Rio. Okay. Nabigyan ka na ng username and password? Yes po. Okay. So, nakalag-in ka na rin or hindi pa? Nakalag-in ako kaya lang hindi pa ako nag-talk. Okay. Have you... Oh, oh, what is my problem? So, dapat nakikita nyo na yung tayo ng office management when you log in. Can I see? Can I see? Can I see? Can I see?
Okay na ba? So, I know that you'll be having questions later. So, just send me a message as I've said and I will try to reply you as soon as I can. Okay? Yeah. Especially with your logging into the portal, how to access whatever that your concern is. Okay? So, let's go to the second portion of um, your class today. The first one we have finished is the management functions so now let's take a look at now the principle so um this is uh quite long so please bear with me we have to finish it <laughs> it's part of the course outline and um these concepts are very important because you will apply them uh in your daily life as a manager okay so let's um take a look at this by the way these are also principles that are um, created by Henry Fayol, same person we have um, talked about earlier. So just to remind you, for those who are latecomers, there is a grading system that we have to follow. So your grading system, as I've said, is comprising quizzes, assignments, and also class participation, as well as final exam, which comprises 40%. You can always go back to that later into the lesson notes sa portal, okay? So, the passing is 60 to 65, which is equivalent to the grade point of 3, okay? So, to be able to um, accomplish that, you have to do your quizzes, assignments, class participation, and of course, your final exam, okay? So, today's session on the part 2 of this today's session, we'll be learning about the principles of management. So, we are done with defining the management, right, and the functions. And so, let's go to number 3. But the question is, is there a best way to manage a business organization? Is there a best way to manage an organization? A business yes. organization? Okay. So if you say yes, you can identify what is that way, right? But we have to take note that each business organization is different from the other. So some concepts or strategies may not be applicable to the same. Like for example, a gym versus a restaurant. The strategies will be different, okay? So managing the business organization is going to be the best way you can think of as a manager, okay? Right, so um, again, these concepts were formulated by Henry Fayol, that French engineer who also formulated the functions of management. So there are 14 management principles and let's start with the first one. Okay, the first one is division of labor. So what is division of labor? Can you see the ants? Ever you wondered the life of the ants? Or you don't even care? <laughs> or you did not even think about it? Who cares? Right. So um, if you get to see the life of the ants, they are very organized. Okay. And they have division of labor because there are some ants whose work is to just collect food for the colony. Some ants are called workers. They are the ones who are um, building the colony, you know. And they are also, uh, the queen ant is the one whose job is to just lay eggs. So there is a division of labor. So in the same way, in the same concept, in management, you have to make sure that there is division of labor. So there is more 
uh, efficiency if you you divide the work according to their specialization. As I've said, it is like a concept of organizing. You're going to put somebody in the correct place so they can be more efficient. Okay, and you have to divide them according to their skills and qualities. Yeah, so you're going to have a division of labor. That means you're going to specialize them, look at their specialization and put them to the place where they can work properly. Okay, so divide them according to their capacities. So you don't, um, you as a manager, you don't take all the job. The typing job, you give to this person. The delivery job, you give to the delivery guy. Okay? The designing of your posters, your ads, you have to give it to the graphics designer. So there's a division of labor towards the goal. Okay? So that's the principle number one, division of labor. Okay? Right. So principle number two is authority. Okay? So what is authority? So when you are the manager... You give orders, and that's your right. That's your authority, okay? But when you give orders, the reason for you to give orders is not just to say, yalla sura sura, okay? <laughs> you give orders so that you can get the jobs done, okay? You don't become bossy and just give orders for no reasons. You give it through your authority because you want to get things done, so that means when you give order, the order should be in relation to your goals. Something that would make sense so you can achieve your goal. Yeah. So that's called the principle of authority that you as a manager has the authority to give uh, orders or to give instructions. Okay. All right. So what's the first one? First uh, principle. Okay. So number one is division of Labor. And number two is authority. Okay. So division of labor means you have to divide the specialization and give, give them the work they need so that they can be more efficient. And authority means you have the right to give orders to get things done. All right. Any questions on that? So since you have the authority to give orders, you also have to follow the rules. Not because you're the boss, you're exempted from the rules and from the policies and procedures of the company, you're not exempted. In fact, you're the one who's supposed to be the one to do it first and obey it first because you are the leader, okay? So you have to be a good example, and that leads us to the third principle. That's principle of discipline, okay? So D-A-D, -D, dad. Huh? So we can easily remember, okay? So the principle of discipline says that the members of the organization has to follow and respect the rules and agreements of the organization. So you do not just give orders and then you don't follow the rules and regulations. Yeah. So you have to give orders at the same time. You have to follow the rules and regulations. Okay, so number four, number four is the principle of the unity of command. So what is unity of command? So when um, the employee receives instruction from the manager, okay, um, what you're going to do when you are being hired or when you're applying, you have to ask a question to whom I should report to. Or you never even ask who you should report to. So the reason is because in this principle of unity of command, the employee has to receive his or her instructions from only one person. So if you have like three managers, HR manager, um, whatever managers that you have there, there is only one person you are reporting to. Okay? So you don't do all the jobs that they're asking you to do. So the principle, according to Henry Fayol of the unity of command, is you have to receive instruction only from your superior. If they want to give you instruction, these other managers, tell them to give, talk to my manager so they can give me the instruction. I cannot get instruction directly from you. Okay? So that's the principle of the unity of 
command. So there is a unity in command. That means that you are going to get instruction only from one person. Or else you'll be getting all the work, then you'll get stressed. <laughs> right? You'll get stressed. All right. Now let's go to number four. Number four is subordination of individual interest to the common good. So subordination of individual interest or to the common good. Okay, quite long, right? But let's take a look at the concept here of um, individual interest. Okay, example, you have an employee, okay? You told the employee to do type this, um, encode this into the system. Okay, after she finished the job, she started chatting with her friends over social media, using your internet, using your laptop, company, everything, yeah? Uh, using the time of the company. So now, the individual interest is not subordinate. It becomes above the common good. And what is the common good? The individual interest is for the person's concern. Okay? And the common good is the good of the organization, the business. So it says in this concept that your individual interest should be below or subordinate this. That means this has to be the priority number one. Got it? Okay? So you can remind your employees from time to time that in the concept of management, I have to impose to you that the common good is the good of the organization. Okay, so if you're doing something which is for your personal sake, that is now a conflict of interest. Okay, so here comes when this one becomes the first priority. What happens here is there is what we call as the conflict of interest. Because normally, the number one interest should be the organization, not the person's interest. For example, you're working and then at work, you're going to bring some food to sell. Okay, <laughs> so that is um, okay, but it might be unprofessional, especially if it's part of your policies and procedures, then you don't do that because it's very unprofessional. Plus, it, it goes against the principle of management. Yeah? Okay, number five. It's called scalar chain. So, DAD, US. So, we have DAD. U.S. Dalus. Okay. Uh, and then number six is also S. Scalar chain. What do you see here? Anong tawag dyan? What do you call this? What do you call this? Is that organization? Yes. It's called an organizational chart. And you can see there's a chain. Yeah? Coming from below to top or top to bottom. And what do you see here? In terms of authority, who has the highest authority? The highest is the one on top. So you can see here that in this concept of the principle of management, the line of authority comes from the top to bottom. Okay, so the rank of the management also is from top to bottom. You can see from highest to lowest. So it is represented by a diagram called the organizational chart. And this concept of the principle of management is called the scalar chain. Okay, scalar is like a scale, which is like a chain, so a scalar chain. Okay, right. Any questions on this? Okay, remember that in scalar chain, the line of authority in organization is open represented by these boxes. And that boxes is actually what we call as the organizational chart, okay? So when you apply for a job, you have to see the picture of the organization. And looking at the organizational chart, you will see where do I report to? Who should I report to? You don't go directly to the CEO. That's called breaking protocols, mm -hmm. yeah? Uh, and that's being disrespectful, okay? So you have to go first to maybe managing director before, and they'll be the one to talk to the CEO unless you're granted direct permit, okay? So that's called protocol. So in the principles of management scalar chain, you have to see the line of authority, okay? Mm -hmm. Any questions on this? On uh, number six. Thank you, Okay, number six, we have 
and remuneration number sorry number seven na pala tayo tama ba six number seven this seven. is wrong wrong number <laughs> sorry for that okay anyway that is remuneration so you have remuneration uh what do you mean by remuneration in other words compensation what can you say about compensation or remuneration in other words salaries what can you say about that in terms of management, if you're the manager, how do you look at salaries, compensations, remunerations? You will accept any salary and leave you. <laughs> <laughs> what, if you're the manager, how do you look at the compensation and remuneration? I think it depends on the reward. How you, how are you staying long? Yeah, you can stay long time for the company, for example. Mm -hmm. Depends on the experience. Depends on experience. Okay, experience. Uh, okay. Position. position. What else? Work. Type of work or quality of work? Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. Or maybe nationality? Don't <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. Yeah. but exactly. of course, in the West, they don't uh, do that. <laughs> <Be too long. laughs> Only here that um your your nationality actually has a factor to consider in terms of compensation, which goes back to culture. Um, not necessarily um the 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 policies and procedures of the land, okay, or the law of the land, but actually this is the reality, which is goes back to culture, okay. So, uh, in the in the concept of remuneration, it says that Henry Fayol says that you have to be fair and just in giving your compensation, and of course you have to give compensation because if you don't give compensation, nobody wants to work without salary, right? Oh, and we know for the fact that. Why do we have to get salary? Why why are we waiting for the salary? <laughs> for what is your salary? Right. Okay. So yeah. uh, you have some physiological you have some daily needs. It's called physiological needs okay so as a manager you should provide this you can see the pyramid it will, this is the highest part of the pyramid you can see here as it goes up the space is shorter and in these types of needs this is called the hierarchy of needs okay it's called the hierarchy of needs that if you're a manager you have to understand the needs of your employees and this is according to mass low Okay, this is the theory of Maslow, hierarchy of needs, that you have to give remuneration because they need, people need to give their physiological, they have to satisfy their physiological needs like food, shelter, you pay your rent, what else? Pay your other bills. Yes. Shelter, everything, okay? Everything that is more of a physical, you know. And then you go to the next level, you have to go for security. So they want to make sure, your employees wants to make sure that they can have a job for the next three years by giving contracts. So if you provide that, you're able to satisfy the need. When you're able to satisfy these two, what is the next thing that people look forward to? They want to have belongingness. They want to feel that they belong in the company, that they are part of the organization. So you cannot ignore your employees, for example. And then after that, you have what? They want to have a self-awareness, okay? Or maybe sometimes they say both of this, just say love, okay? <laughs> These two are love. And the highest one is self-actualization, okay? We're in, sometimes the employees have a good salary, okay? And they have security, they have contract which is five years, maybe ten years, but they still want to feel like they belong. And then you also give that. Then finally, they're still not happy. They still want to go and find somewhere else because they're looking for self-actualization. They want to have meaning for their life. They want to be happy with what they're doing. So uh, take note that um, it's not only money all the time. Okay, but the concept here is that there are a need that you have to give in the concept of remuneration. Okay, right. So if you understand your employees, you know their needs. 
So don't ignore their needs. Not only money. <laughs> okay. I came to a point that I have. Uh, uh, I worked before in Al Muzain Exchange Company, and I worked there for three years. And we really don't have any day off. Yeah. Half day day off. So in that half day, what would I do? I would just wash my clothes and what? I couldn't anymore appreciate the overtime pay because I want to rest. <laughs> I want I want to make sure that I have, you know, um, love, self-love. So therefore, these two are already given. They will go to the next level, okay? So um, let's go now to the next um, level. Or let, I mean, principle, the principle of order, okay? What does the principle of order um, say? This is also... Uh, somehow, same thing with number one, okay? This is similar with number one, which also goes back to the function of the manager, which is organizing. That is the concept. The concept of organizing, what did we say in the concept of organizing? What did we say in the concept of organizing for the function of the manager? You're going to put people and resources into the right place so they can work together. So a structure of working relationships. So if you're the manager and you have hired an accountant, where are you going to put this person? In which department you're going to put an accountant? Okay. The customer service? <laughs> where? You're going to put them in accounting okay. department. Why are you not so sure? What does that accountant do? <laughs> okay. A marketing expert, where do you put this person? Shempre, marketing and sales department, a psychology graduate. Where? Yeah, because they deal with psychology, psychology or the way of thinking of people, behavior. So you put them in the HR department. How about uh, an MBA holder and has an experience in running a business? Where will you put this person? Okay, it could be in the operations or we can just say top management, right? Maybe maging operations manager or something like that. Or maybe a business development manager. So now you are giving order, trying to make sure that these people are in the right place. Because if you jumble that, you know already what will happen. <laughs> you can put the uh, you know accounting graduate and put them in the HR. You, you know what I mean, right? So in the principle of order, you have to make sure that the people at, are in the correct uh, right. place right. and position. Same thing like in the division of labor, you give them into the place where they belong, okay? Um, so this is for the sake of efficiency and coordination because we have learned that if they know what they're doing, they can easily finish the job, right? But if they're clueless of their role and it's not what they have learned or it's not their specialties, they will have a hard time. Okay? Right. So that's the principle of order. And then principle number nine is centralization. Okay. Centralization. Okay. Um, here in this concept, Henry Fayol says that um, we should involve the staff or the employees in the decision making. Okay, decision making. For example, I want to decide on um, we're going to open a new branch. So before I decide on which area we're going to the new branch, I'm going to ask my staff where do you think is the best place for our new branch. So now you're making a decision by involving the staff. The doctor, no, yes, yes, mashallah. You want to say something? What's, what's the topic going on? The principles of management on involving employees on decision making. Wow. That's the first topic today. No? no, this is not the second one. They are already done. The yeah, with the first one. Great, great, great. So is it first day today? Yes, today's the first day. That you have taken very good decision, very good step that you have taken. You know, there are more than, I believe, more than 300,000 people, especially the Filipinos here in Kuwait, more than 300,000. Try to check it up how many of them they are continuing their education while working here. How many of them they are continuing their education while working? Very few, very few. 
and you are among those few, those who have taken the decision to, to enhance your career, to enhance you. I mean, you are among those people, those who don't want to be left behind. Yes, that's a very good decision. And this decision will pay you back. It will pay you back. I mean, after three months, after three months, there will be a amazing change. I mean, you will be able to gain a lot of knowledge, which you which is required for office work. The way you're going to deal, the way you're going to talk, it will be a different. It will be different. That will make difference. Knowledge makes us makes us different and make us stand out. Actually, knowledge brings us out from the bus. Okay. So when you get the knowledge, the way you're going to talk, the way you're going to deal, it will be different, and that will be that will stand out. Yep. So continue, try to work it out, try to make your uh, DOR transcript of record beautiful. You know what does it mean, beautiful? Okay, it means try to get the highest score, highest mark, okay? If you need to request your teacher to retake your quiz, do it so, okay? There is no harm, there is no problem of appearing it again and again until you able to make it up, okay? Yep. All right. Okay. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so speaking of the quizzes, I only allow retake if you got less than 50%. <laughs> okay? Because maybe there's something wrong. Maybe uh, your internet got disconnected or something like that. Okay? Or maybe you got sick, so you just forced yourself to take the quiz and you got lower than 50%, I can reset your quiz. So other than that, uh, if you got 50%, I will accept it as your final grade. Okay? To be fair and square to everybody. Okay. So let's go back to this centralization. So as I said, you as a manager would also involve your employees in decision making. And also somehow you give them some authority. Like, you know, lessen the micromanaging. Let them decide sometimes. Not that all the time they will have to ask you or else nothing will be done without you. So give them a sense of authority, but it's your decision how much authority you have to give. Okay, but the most important concept in this uh, principle is you're going to involve your staff in decision making. When you give them a high role in decision making, that's called centralizing. But if you give them very less role in decision making, that's called decentralizing or decentralization. Okay, so that's number nine. Okay, number 10. <laughs> We have, number 10, we have initiative, okay? Initiative, what do you understand uh, with the word initiative? <clears throat> what do you understand when you say initiative? Yes, Ms. Joanne. Yes, Ms. Joanne. Take action. Take action. What else? Okay. You have some actions to do, right? Okay, so in this principle, Henry Fayol says that you should give freedom to your employees so they can formulate and carry out their plans, okay? So don't always give them instruction, even if you have the authority to do that. Let them also have some initiative so they can, um, you know, harness their, you know, and hone their skills in decision-making, in working, so they will not become like the nail that it will not work without the hammer. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So give them some some degree of freedom so they can formulate their plans. Like, for example, you give them some activity to do and don't give them support. Let them do their own plans, mm -hmm. their own strategies. Mm -hmm. And if they did well, then okay, give them um compliment. Yeah. All right. So if they did mistake, you tell them what to do next. So they will not do the same mistake. So this is what the principles of initiative says. You have to give a little bit of freedom so they can formulate. So let them do some initiative on their own. And it really works, I could say, from my experience. It's also, yeah, right? Let them do as well. Not all the time you're the one thinking what to do, what's next. Let them do, okay? Uh, there was a time that you, I was, you know, like I was on vacation and that that was a... um. When was that? Okay. Anyway, I was on vacation. So the staff was the only one who are 
left behind. I did not give any instruction because I was hoping I can come back before the graduation. I did not give them any instruction what to prepare, but they have seen how to do it, what to do and everything. And then when I came back, it's like only one day before graduation. <laughs> so I, to my surprise, they're able to pull it out without my help. So I have we have given them some initiative and they're able to do it. So I'm very happy. So I don't have to get myself intention while on vacation. <laughs> right? Okay. So um, the next one is the unity of direction. So in the unity of direction, it is like the opposite of number four. What is number four? Unity of command. Unity, unity of command. command. Dito naman, unity of direction. So command means you're receiving command from one supervisor. Here, unity of direction, the concept is that the um, efforts of employees should only be directed also by only one manager. Okay, so here in number four, you are focused on the employee. Okay, yes. that means the employee should get only instruction from one manager, while in number 11, the efforts, okay, should be only managed, okay, by only or coordinated by only one manager. One manager. So you're focused on the efforts here focus on the instruction to employees. You see the difference? So the unity of direction says that the efforts of the employees should be coordinated and directed only by one manager. So, so it's not like the manager said, go to the right, the other manager said, go to the left. No. <laughs> so you'll be doing like that. So the principles of uh, management, which is unity of direction, should only be one manager to direct uh, what's going on. Okay? Right. So... Next one is, okay, let's keep that because it's already been discussed. Let's go to this one. Stability of tenure of staff. Okay, um, what is tenure? According to this principle, the tenure should be stable. So what is tenure? Um, according to Google, whatever definition you can find, maybe be Britannica, Encyclopedia, whatever that is, or Cambridge Dictionary, Merriam-Webster. What is tenure? Uh, the, the, the expand of uh, staff staying in the company. Okay, that's good. That means the the um number of years, perhaps, how long a an employee stays with you. So according to Henry Fayol, it has to be stable. Okay. Um but in reality is people would leave the company, right? They would resign. Why? Aside from maybe there's no salary from <laughs> or what else? What could be other reasons why? Uh, employees would leave. No growth. No growth. And they are not happy. Yeah. They're not happy. What else? There's no proper plan for the employees. Okay. Yeah, okay. No growth. Professional growth, right? They don't feel like they are moving forward. Moving forward. Okay. What else? Maybe they're bored. Or maybe, yeah. maybe they're already going to also retire. <laughs> Right? Mm -hmm. um, because we are all young. <laughs> we don't think about retirement. But this is the reality. Um, people would retire. Sometimes they go to another country. Okay, what else? Maybe they plan to go back to school. These are all valid reasons. We only know the, uh, <laughs> the reasons. But, you know, when people leave, it will affect the operation yes yeah and when somebody is going to resign that post is going to be left behind where that means if you're going to replace that person you have to train, train. what else mm. Okay, give new uniform. Okay, what <laughs> go back to zero from the top. Okay, so that means that in the uh, the staff uh, retirement, 
or the staff uh, invoice at turnover, okay, is equivalent to a cost, right? Yes, yes. So as an HR manager, you don't want the rate of re um, resigning to be very high. Yeah, the reason is because we know that it's going to cost us a lot, okay? So according to the principle of uh, stability of tenure of staff, the um, the turnover rate, what is turnover rate? Can you please search um, in your phone the turnover rate, okay? Turnover rate. What is turnover rate? Yes, Miss Mary Ann. Okay, percentage of employees leaving the company within a certain period of time. It could be in a month, in a year, in a quarter. So you have to know that and have to be stable. Okay, so like if it's like 50%, that's alarming. Okay. Um, if it's less than 30%, it's normal because of course, as we have said, there are reasons why they leave and you cannot stop them from doing that and it's normal. Now, um, what is the formula? Because this is a rate, that means it's in a percentage. Mm -hmm. And to be able to get this, there should be a formula. How do you know that? At least you should know that. You can go further read with what you have searched, the formula for turnover rate. Okay, worst thing is it should not be negative. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I search ma'am to calculate turnover rate, we divide the number of terminates during the year by the number of employees at the beginning of the period. Okay, so you're trying to get for the annual. Okay, mm -hmm. so that means you're going to list down the number of employees who has resigned for the whole year. Okay, so those who have resigned or left the company divided by the total employees for that year. So therefore, you get the turnover rate for that year. If you want to get only for that month, then only the number of people in that month over the number of employees in that month, okay? So the concept here is, is it has to be stable, not very high and suddenly very low, okay? So because there's a an effect into that one. So the negative effect is that, of course, as we have said, there's a training cost, new uniform, and also so on and so forth. But the question is, is there any positive effect of people resigning from the work? Well, if that is your mortal enemy and she left, then that's good to <laughs> no, uh, There's one. Yes. Uh, if the person is really not working, but the company is hard to re uh, terminate us, those kind of people resign, it's a safe company. I'm not going to resign today. I don't need to fire your sign. I want to give the uh, three months uh, from. Okay, time. okay. So, all right, that's good. Any other positive? No. <laughs> Well, there's always positive and negative and everything. Of if that person leaves and get replaced, maybe that person will have the new one will have new ideas as well, new skills, right? New contributions. Yes, right. Yeah. So there is also positive on that one. So we shouldn't be so sad if somebody leaves the uh, company because maybe the one who will replace is better, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So there is also a. Uh, positive there so new hiring will um new hiring is going to bring new people to the organization and maybe they'll give you a fresh perspective right uh, especially if they are younger they they know this sometimes the, the elder people doesn't know what the younger people knows okay so again to be able to compute that you just have to uh, divide the number of employees left over the number of employees in that certain period of time okay so as i've said there is positive and negative of that okay and uh, any questions on this okay next let's go to equity equity okay what is the what is the uh what is the let me call this uh root word of equity
equal. <laughs> okay? So this concept says that the manager has to be equal and friendly. That means fair. You shouldn't be unfair. Okay? So managers should be both friendly and fair to the subordinates. Okay? Right. Because if you're not, what's going to happen? The... Yeah, okay. It's not the possible to complete our work. Mm -hmm. Plus, they would feel grievances. They'll be fighting, perhaps. Maybe they're pulling each other's hair. Okay, whatever. So you should be friendly. At the same time, be fair to subordinates. Okay? But in the concept of equity, we have to take note that there are two different things when it comes to equality and equity. Okay? So, for example... We have here, uh, do you think equality is fair? No. Do you think equity is fair? Yeah. Why? Based on the picture. <laughs> Based on the picture. <laughs> Based, on the picture. <laughs> Based on the picture. But what is the picture saying? We should be fair to each other. How? <laughs> Give an example. Yes, Ms. Ria. Seeing what's happening on the other side. Like the yeah. other one. Okay, I want you to focus on the boxes. Yes, Miss Marcel. Miss Marcel. Yeah, what's your idea? Okay, what else? Come on, don't shy out to express your thoughts. If you are the manager, are you going to follow equality or equity? Equity, right? Why? Depends on the position. So you have to consider their capabilities. Okay? Their skills. Their physical attributes. Right? <laughs> uh, also, you can consider their culture, their religion. Okay? Um, for example, you're going to give... Um, Eid holidays, but then you won't give yeah. Christmas holidays. <laughs> it's not fair, right? Okay. Or you give opportunity to the one who is already very good, but you don't give opportunity to those who are incapable so they can improve. Yeah. So now you see here that you give more favor to this in terms of what they need yeah. so that they can have the same opportunity. Okay, so you can say that you are equal here by providing what you like to give, but you did not consider other factors. So in this case, in which scenario the employees will be happy? You got the point, right? Okay, so it's not that you gave them equal salaries. That's why we now we understand we don't give same salaries. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> yes, so you have to be in equity, the principle of equity that you have to give um, equal, fair opportunities, okay, or salaries to everybody, the one they deserve and the one they need, okay, the one that would help them develop, okay. And the last one, of course, is the French term esprit de corps, okay, which means spirit of the body, like our bodies, if we don't have spirit, what happens? We die, okay. Okay. <laughs> That's how it is, okay? So if you don't have the spirit to work together, okay, the body will die. So same thing in an organization. If you don't have the concept of working together as one, like a spirit and a body, then it's not going to happen. Your goals will not be achieved. So you have to be all together, working together. So as an example, I have here a short video. I find it very funny, but very helpful and meaningful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, this is a an ad uh, for a travel agency that means a travel that is going to give transportation. Okay, so what uh, I just took it for the concept of a speedy parking working together as one body. You can see the difference rather than when you're alone. Yeah. yeah. So that's the concept of that. There's strength in unity. Okay. S3 decor. Okay. Spirit in one body. All right. So do you have any questions? Okay. So let's try to see if you remember the things. <laughs> let's see if we remember the things. Okay. So, um, I will be giving you a worksheet and let's try to see. You have to close your notes. I've given you five minutes for us to review your lessons. And then we'll try to answer this. The answers are there. You just have to choose. <laughs> but if you don't remember and you did not understand, you will not be able to answer it. Okay. But I'll be giving you like five minutes to look at your notes and the concepts that you have learned before we do the quiz.
Okay, so keep your notes away, please. And let's try to see how much learning we have um, attained. Okay, so this is not to see how we can do But to see how much learning has taken place. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. So we can answer as soon as we have to do it. I'm going to go to the hospital. 